You know we always say howdy. You don't have to say howdy back, being members of the media, but we say that anyway around here in Aggieland. So thank you for uh, gathering tonight, especially on a Sunday evening. I'm sorry to, uh, I was apologizing to the front row for making them uh, work on a Sunday night. Uh, so I apologize for that. And uh, if you were texting me throughout the day, obviously I was not getting back to you. So I apologize for that as well. Obviously, the news is out there throughout the day in the morning, and I know that you all got our uh, press release from earlier today regarding the change in leadership for Aggie football. I felt it was important that we uh, had this gathering so we can have an in-person conversation and really be transparent and discuss what led to this conclusion and the magnitude of this comprehensive decision. So it's also important that I have some prepared remarks here to be very, very clear on what's happening. Our mission for Texas A&M Athletics is to create opportunities through championship athletics. We, we launched that in the spring of 2022. And our vision is as home of the 12th man, we are the pinnacle in those opportunities. And it's three categories, diplomas earned, championships won, and leaders equipped and launched to impact the world. And that's really our student athletes. So we, we believe we have a very clear mission, and we also follow the core values of Texas A&M. Earlier last week, I recommended to my boss, Interim President Mark Welsh, and both of us then recommended to Chancellor John Sharp that a change was absolutely necessary. And like I stated in the release, they accepted my decision. President Welsh would have been here today, but he was speaking at a predetermined uh, event in Houston around Veterans Day. Obviously, being a, a four-star general, he's in demand for Veterans Day activities, and so uh, he sends his regards. And I think we have a statement uh, from him that will go out later today. Mark Welsh, he, he's a phenomenal leader. And ever since he took over, I've so enjoyed working with him and his passion and energy for all things Texas A&M. The assessment that I delivered was that we are not reaching our full potential. We are not in the championship conversation, and something was not quite right about our direction and the plan. I appreciate their support for this decision and our plan moving forward. The timing is not ideal, especially after last night, which I'll touch on here in a second. But it's also not unique given certain dates coming up in college athletics, and you all know what those are. However, given various meetings and schedules last week and the end of the season approaching, we decided to move forward immediately. From there, we had a busy sports weekend around Aggieland, right? And of course, prepping for Aggie football game day. Can you believe that? 103,000 Aggies show up to support our military and especially support our players. There's no other place in the country that would have done that, to have a packed, full stadium. And our obligation is to make sure we service the Aggies that are supporting our program. Our, our, our players really needed that win, and that was important. Aggies are the best. And uh, again, nowhere in the country would have seen that type of turnout. I really want to thank our athletic staff. They do an amazing job every single game day, but every day of the week to put on those kind of events and make sure that we do it the best in the country. And so I want to thank all of our staff and all of our coaches for their hard work and dedication to excellence. <clears throat> in my analysis, <clears throat> I determined at this point, and for, for lots of reasons, our program is stuck in neutral. We should be relevant on the national scene. Something is not clicking. Something is not working. And therefore, something had to give in order for Aggie football to reach our full potential. As leaders, every decision we make or every decision we don't make has consequences. Consistency in how the program operates on a daily basis impacts the confidence level of every single person in the program and thus influences performance. Based on my experience, the best programs have confidence. The program has an established identity. The program maximizes the talent. 
the leadership is fully integrated in the university, the athletics program, and its culture. I did not feel like we were meeting those standards of excellence and leadership. A little bit before 9 a.m. this morning, President Welsh and I met with Coach Fisher and informed him that we were making an immediate change and he would no longer serve as our football coach. I respect Coach Fisher. He's a good man. I respect his family and all that he's accomplished in college football. Mark Robinson, Associate Athletic Director for Football Operations, was also informed that he will no longer serve in his role effective immediately. After we met with Coach Fisher, I immediately asked Elijah Robinson to serve as interim coach for the last two games, the transfer and recruiting period and the bowl game. As reported, Elijah accepted and I really look forward to supporting him. He's a great coach, a great leader, and the young men in our program really look up to him in so many ways. We then met with the football staff, talked about coaching, supporting our players, and making sure that they fulfill their obligation too as Aggie football coaches. Around 11 a.m., we were gathering the team. The team obviously had already heard the news, so that, that was unfortunate, but nothing we could control. And so they were gathering around, and around 11 a.m., I told the players that it was my job to make the, the decisions that are best interest of the university and to put them in the best position to succeed and provide the resources and the leadership to make all that happen. I told the players that based on our high standards here at A&M, that was not happening. I expect them to really rally around Coach Robinson and finish this season strong. And ultimately, we are here to serve them. And that is the beginning and the end for how we provide leadership. It was really cool to see the reaction of the players when coach spoke to them and they came up to him and, uh, and really, really responded in a positive manner. And he, he, he just did a great job of showing leadership and making sure that everyone is going to be on the same page moving forward. Coach Robinson will do the regular scheduled press conference tomorrow here at, uh, at 1 o'clock. As everyone knows, this decision is a comprehensive decision. It involves many people in micro and macro elements. The finances are monumental. As the contract states, there is a buyout provision in Coach Fisher's contract, and those details will be worked out. Let me be very clear in this next part. Texas A&M Athletics and the 12th Man Foundation will be the sole sources of the necessary funds covering these transition costs. And there's really two categories. We will use unrestricted contributions within the 12th Man Foundation for the first one-time payments. And the athletic department will fund the annual payments for the remaining portion by growing our revenues and adjusting our annual operating budget accordingly. This will only involve athletics and 12th Man Foundation funds. Although this is a major, major financial decision that comes with many consequences, we have a plan and we will not let this impact the performance or the culture of our entire athletics program. Every sport and every department matters. Our search will be comprehensive in nature. The timing does give us a chance to survey the landscape, test the marketplace, and zero in on top candidates. We will be diligent, confidential, and also efficient. I will use a football advisory group of key people that understand winning football, culture, and Texas A&M, and what makes this place special. We will also utilize other resources like former players and industry experts um, along the way. Here's the profile of what we will work from. A coach that has a program identity, great interpersonal skills, track record of player development, commitment to academics, a recruiting machine, supreme organizational skills, culture of discipline, passion for the game, proven winner, strong leadership skills, involved in the community, of course, knowledge of X's and O's, and someone that understands and also can capitalize in today's modern day college athletics. Let me close on this. I've been here for five years. Aggieland is special. The ingredients for a championship are here 
Aggies want to do it the right way and deserve excellence in everything that we do. We appreciate the full support of the 12th man, former students, 12th man foundation donors, anyone who supports Texas A&M and Aggies everywhere. Onward we go. We'll answer some questions. Start over front left, Mark. Ross, uh, earlier in the week, it seemed like Jimbo was probably going to get through the rest of the season before a decision was made. Why did the timetable change? Yeah. Here's the deal. You're either moving forward or you're stuck. We were stuck. And so I, I kind of used the analogy with, uh, with somebody earlier. You know how you're driving down the highway? It's a four-lane road, and I drive fast, okay? <clears throat> I like, you know, 75 to 80. And somebody's in the left lane, and they're going 55, and they won't move over. We were that car going 55. Something had to give. They had to get out of the way. So we had to move this program forward. And, and here's the thing. I got back from the Ole Miss game, and we're a football family. So we're sitting on the back porch, and I'm making, why? Why is this not working? What is the problem? What do Aggies think? Do we have any hope? Where do we go? And so I called, uh, I called President Welsh Sunday night, and I said, we need to meet on Monday. We need to have a plan. The plan needs to be executed efficiently, but also knew that we had conversations this week. There are regent meetings. Of course, the regents were informed of my recommendation to the president. And so the timing of all of that played into it. And then I thought, if we were going to have an interim coach, that this week is going to be a little it's going, to, it's going to be a little wild, right? The players are going to be emotional that we could prepare for this game based on the opponent. And then you go and try to beat LSU, you know, the last game of the year and create some momentum. So, again, not ideal, but also not unique in the modern day of college football, especially given transfer portal world, signing day, and all those dynamics that, that played into it. Front row right, Olin, and then we'll go Sam. Uh, yeah, Ross, so first of all, to be clear, um, the Ole Miss loss was kind of the uh, last straw th kind of it's situation? To it's totality, Olin. It really is. It's, you can't say it's one game because then what happens after last night, right? We had fun, right? We won by whatever, 41 points, right? So it's totality of how the program operates on a day-to-day -day basis. Something was not working to reach our full potential. So it's not one game, it's not one moment, it's not one win, one loss. But again, the timing of that game and the timing of things that were coming down the track, to me, we had to move this past week. Can you uh, shed some light on exactly where you were when you delivered that news to Jimbo and what his reaction was? Talking about this morning? Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, within within Kyle Field is where we uh, met with him, and I would say it was quick and cordial. So to the left, Sam, and then to the right, Travis. Ross, on the buyout, are you guys expecting that you will pay it in full? There's different parameters that are outlined in the contract, and again, those mechanics will be worked out as soon as we you know touch base with his representation. Gotcha. And you talk about totality. I'm curious. What bothered you the most about how this program ran? Was it whether it was day to day, whether it was on field, whatever? What, what, what bothered you most about where this program was? Yeah, honestly, just consistency and positivity and confidence. That's really what it boils down to. And that everything we do in this world rises and falls on leadership, good and bad. And so how you make decisions on a consistent basis, how leadership is provided on a consistent basis, that plays into we're going to run these plays, we're going to map these plays out on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're going to practice them, and then in the game, do people have the confidence to run that play? It all adds up, no matter what the decision is, no matter if it's a tactical football decision or anything else. And so to me, the fundamentals of that process, there was something just not clicking to provide confidence for everyone in the in the program. Right, Travis, and then we'll go to the left, Daryl. Yeah, Ross, 
what is the, the due diligence process look like for making sure that you have the funds for a, a buyout like this? And it, it, yeah. were donors contacted, put in, in, in uh, queue for this kind of thing? What, what does yeah. that process yeah. look like and how long does it take? Yeah. <clears throat> well, the, look, we have the best fundraising organization in college athletics, the 12th Man Foundation. And the board and Travis, our CEO, they're phenomenal. And it's a collaborative working relationship while maintaining the independent structure of the 12th Man Foundation. And so those things are all important, the collaboration and the independence. And so there's buckets. There's buckets that the 12th Man Foundation houses within their structure. And uh, those are flexible funds that we had a conversation about and said those, those funds are to benefit athletics. I mean, they raise money for championship athletics, right? And our mission is championship athletics and opportunities. So sit down, you have those conversations. They have uh, their discussions within their organization. And so that's the one-time funds. The ongoing payments that are required in the contract, those will be athletic department funds. We grow revenue. We have new TV deals coming up. We have new sponsorship contracts coming up. We're repurposing a lot of our revenue buckets. So we have a lot of new revenue coming our way too, but we also have to manage expenses. And so there's a lot of things within even the football budget that we've got flexibility on where we can still be at a high level, but we can also spend a lot less as well, but we can be a championship funded program. So we're gonna adjust all that. So it's all gonna be fluid. And here's the thing too about the funding. When we sit here in three years from now, what's the collegiate model anyway? Where, what are we doing with the financial arrangement between the athlete and the institution? So the whole model is going to be evolving and changing. The same thing with our revenue and our expense model, the same thing will happen. So we've got a plan. We're going to adjust, and we'll, we'll make this work. What was it about Elijah Robinson that stood out to tab him as the, mm. the interim? The players. The players are the most important. And in fact, I, I was on the practice field this week and I was talking to a scout and we were kind of checking out each uh, position group and he was fixated on the defensive line group. Of course, there's a lot of talent there, but he was actually fixated on how they were being coached. So to me, Elijah is all about the players. The reaction was awesome today when, uh, when he spoke to the team and so, I wanted somebody that the players would gravitate towards. It's going to be a lot coming it their way. We know what that means. And so I've already seen a lot of positivity around his leadership. So that, that's really what it was all about. Left, Daryl. And one other thing, we have two experienced coordinators that know what they're doing with Coach Petrino and Durkin. And so that, that allows that, that decision as well. Ross. I'm, oh, there we I'm go. sure there. I'm not going to phrase this correctly, yeah. but I'm going to guess that there are uh, 12th man fans out there that are thinking that we're wasting money. And I say we as in the university on, on you know, decisions like this. What contractual lessons do you learn from what you're going through right now? Everything, right? We'll analyze everything. And so that'll be part of the the puzzle piece that we put together here in the coming days in terms of what does the market look like? What do contracts look like? There, there's a market for a lot different contracts than what we had, and you can hire a great coach. So we're gonna look at all of that. So we, ha we have to learn a lesson. Look, the dynamics around that decision in 2021, that's an institutional decision, but I take responsibility. I knew what was coming in the marketplace later that fall so I knew that it was the right decision at that time because that's the information we had. It didn't work out. Clearly, it didn't work out. We're going to learn from that and make sure that we don't make those same mistakes again. Second row on the right, Christy, and then Cease. I, I know you weren't here when um, he was first hired, but when he was, everyone was like, you know, he's coming here to yeah. win a national championship, and he didn't even win an SEC championship. So how disappointing is it that you're going to have to start again after – having so much optimism back then. That's, that's the hard part in all of this, right, is there was how many coaches have won, sitting head coaches, won national championships. So everyone had tons of optimism. Uh, but again, it just goes back to the last couple years. Do we have momentum? Do we have hope? 
how do we see things trending? And we just didn't see the trend lines improving. And so we thought, let's make that decision now and, and deal with you know, the finances, deal with you know, what's going to come next, and go out and hire a great coach who's going to have a great plan and be highly organized, hire the right staff. You combine that with the A&M resources, we're going to win a lot of football games. Front left, Cease. Two things. You mentioned the hire a winner. Will Robinson be considered for the job full time? Right now, everybody's a candidate. Okay. And the second thing, I don't want to harp on 2021, but you know, hindsight's the best. Has Jimbo changed as a coach or the way he coached when he first got here, or has college football changed any along those same oh, no. lines? You know, I think, look, I think the best leaders adapt, whatever that means, right? And so, again, it's that description of if, are you in the left passing lane going 55 and everybody's zooming by you in the right lane? Or are you in the left lane going 75? And so you have to adapt. You have to evolve. And I'm not going to say whether he did or didn't, but it didn't work. And we sit here today not at the level that we expect or that we have the potential to be. So that's why we're here. Back center, Chip, and then down front, Brent. Russ, you've been here uh, Chip. five years, as you mentioned. This program over time, over history, has not had a lot of consistent winning. They've won a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah. In your mind, what have you seen from the inside in these last five years that would have prevented that over the last half century yeah. or more? Yeah. <laughs> I, may, I make a joke um, when I speak to groups. I got introduced in the uh, fall of 2019 as the latest athletic director at Texas A&M. That's not really a good thing, right? And so to me, consistency of leadership, you can't, you can't do this. Now, we're making a change, so I get it. But we need to find somebody who can build this sustainable tenure. We have to. Can we find the next R.C. Slocum who can be here a long time, build it, win those championships? Consistency of leadership and continuity, it is so important. Look at the A&M system. Look at Chancellor Sharp. It's been here a long time. Look at the growth. Look at the president tenure here at Texas A&M. I've been here four and a half years, and I'm on my fourth president. We've got to have consistency. And so to me, that's the key of getting the next hire right, is the consistent and continuity that we have to provide moving forward. Down front, Brent. Sir, there are a lot of changes coming to the SEC next year. Yeah. Texas and Oklahoma, Oklahoma coming into the league, Texas coming here. Did that impact your decision at all to make a, a, a move now? Here, here's, here's how I looked at it. Everything impacts the next year. But as we said here, we finished the season hopefully strong. The transfer portal is coming, coming and going, signing day, a bowl game, Maybe we hire some new assistant coaches and you know, do those kind of changes. I wasn't confident in that plan, which then would have impacted the 2024 season. So it's not about transition of SEC. It's, it's all about, can we go through this next eight weeks and have the right plan and succeed in that environment to build for 24? And I, I didn't see a pathway to then lead into 2024. Go to the left, Alex, and then Dave Wilson, you'll wrap us up. We've gone over 25 minutes. When, when you got to meet with the Regents this week, how long were the conversations and what was just yeah, kind of their response? Yeah, it's all, all that's executive, executive session, Alex. Um, I'll just say, look, it was a robust conversation, and I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, you but know, there's, no, there's no vote. This was my decision to the president. Chancellor Sharp, and that was the end of the decision-making process. Of course, there's a discussion, but that's an uh, executive session. All right, Dave, last question to wrap this up. Here's the mic. Thank you. Ross, you said you weren't, you didn't feel confident in the plan. Obviously, there were some changes that were uh, made last year in the coaching staff. Was that a point of contention uh, in any changes in the future? No, actually, uh, summer of 2022, we started talking about getting an offensive coordinator, as an example. So though there was no contention in that plan. It was the right thing to do at the right time. And 
Jimbo was great. He and I had great conversations. All of that was rolling out. Coach Petrino has been been awesome to to be around and his positivity and what he's done, I think, you know, with our quarterback room. So no point of contention. And again, I feel bad for those guys because it didn't work out, but that was the right thing at the right time. And again, simply overall leadership did not work out. Ross, thanks for your time. Okay. And as thanks everybody. Ross mentioned tomorrow we'll have Coach Elijah Robinson here at one o'clock.